Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. In this video, we're gonna teach you a trick that makes your life a lot easier when you're solving ice table problems. So we're gonna do an ice table problem where you solve for equilibrium concentrations, but we're gonna work problems where there's small equilibrium constants. And that is, this is gonna allow us to drop out some of our variables at key points that makes our math way easier. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here is a typical ice table problem. It says, assume that the change in concentration of N2O4 is small enough to be neglected in the following problem. Okay, well that's just telling us we can drop X and we'll get to that point in just a minute. And then it says, calculate the equilibrium concentration of both species in a one liter of solution prepared from 0.129 molar N2O4 with chloroform as the solvent. This problem turns out to be from the OpenStax textbook, and it tells us right off the bat that we can drop X. What does that mean? Well, we'll get to that. First, let's just begin solving this like we would a normal ice table problem. So here it says, fill in, for our first step, fill in the ice table. So the ice table is a tool we use to help us think about how the concentration of our reactants and products is gonna change and what it will actually be at equilibrium. So the I in ice stands for initial, and the initial concentration of N2O4 is 0.129 molar. We know that because it tells us there's 0.129 moles, and it tells us that it's in one liter. So remember molarity is moles over a liter, and in this case 0.129 over one equals 0.129. So you might there confuse 0.129 for moles and accidentally just plug it straight in, but you actually have to calculate the molarity. It just happens to be the same because there's a one liter solution. If there was a two liter solution, you'd see that that number would be half. Okay, so that's the initial concentration of N2O4. What about NO2? Remember that for products, we can assume the initial concentration is zero. The reaction hasn't run. Okay, as this reaction runs, how is it gonna change? Well, N2O4 is gonna drop and NO2 is gonna increase. Very specifically, NO2 is gonna increase by 2x, while N2O4 is gonna decrease by 1x. Those numbers there, the one and the two, come from the stoichiometric coefficients in our problem. What that's basically saying is, every single time I use up one N2O4, it's gonna make two NO2s. So if I used up 10 N2O4s, well, that would make 20 NO2s, and that's why we get the minus one and the plus two, okay? Now, what do we have at equilibrium? 0 0.129 minus x there, and just two x here. So now let's go ahead and write k. Remember that k is equal to products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So we get NO2 squared over N2O4 raised to the first power. Now we're ready to go ahead and plug in numbers for all of those things, and we're gonna have x. And our goal is gonna be find x, and then we can actually solve for our equilibrium concentrations. Just to give you the big picture here, what our goal is is to figure out where is this reaction gonna stop? How much NO2 will we have when the reaction is done running? That's the equilibrium concentration, and that's what we'll be able to solve here. So let's fill it in with equations. That's step three. So NO2 is gonna be 2x squared, and our reactant is gonna be 0 0.129 minus x. Okay, here comes the magic. Normally, if you were solving this problem the way we did in another video, you would have to use the quadratic equation here, and that's a real pain in the butt, and it takes a lot of time. But in this case, because our k is so small, k is 10 to the minus five, so that's a very small k. We can actually drop any x's that are added or subtracted. So here, it tells us that this is allowed if k is less than or equal to 10 to the minus four. And that's a good rule of thumb. So our k in this case is 10 to the minus five. That's less than 10 to the minus four. So what we can do then is we can actually drop that x. The reason is, is because k is so small, this reaction is gonna favor reactants instead of products. And that means that the drop in reactants is gonna be very small. Just a little bit of the reactants will be used up to make some products. And so when you subtract a really small number, it doesn't make much of a difference. For example, if you have a million dollars in your bank account, okay, let's be reasonable. If you have $300 in your bank account and you subtract 0.0001 cent, you'll never notice. 
right? That's subtracting too small of a number to matter. And so we can drop those added or subtracted x's. On the other hand, we can't drop multiplied x's. So like up here, we multiply x by something and we square it. We can't drop that one because if I take a small number and square it, it makes it way different. 0 0.01 squared is 0 0.0001, much smaller. So we can only drop added or subtracted x's. Okay, let's continue trying to solve for x. Now let's go ahead and plug in k, which is 1.07 times 10 to the minus 5, and that's equal to 2x squared. Big opportunity for a mistake here. People oftentimes just square the x and they'll write 2x here, but that squared is on the outside of the parentheses. And what that means is we're gonna square both of those. And so what we should get is 4x squared. So don't make that mistake. Remember that it squares both things inside that parentheses. And that's all divided by 0 0.129. Now let's multiply both sides by 0 0.129 to get rid of it. Good, we got rid of it. That's the sound of numbers being erased. It's a little known fact, but it's exactly what it sounds like, turns out. And now we divide by 4. Okay, we'll do this one on silent. Perfect. All right, now we solve for x lastly by taking the square root. And when we take the square root on the right side, we just get x. All right, now... That may seem like some algebra to you, but it is way less algebra than doing the quadratic formula. So what is x equal to here? Well, we can plug that into our calculator and we'll get 0 0.000587 molar. Now, that x is quite small. Now, remember the question asks for the equilibrium concentration of both species. So a lot of people just leave the answer here, thinking they've solved the problem. And true, they have found x. And very often in math class, that's the end. But in chemistry, we want this value to pertain to something in the laboratory, right? And so that's the concentrations. So let's find the concentration of NO2. We know that's equal to 2x. So that's equal to 2 times 0 0.000587. So our concentration for NO2 is equal to 0 0.00117 molar. Cool. Our concentration for N2O4, on the other hand, is equal to 0 0.129 minus x. Now, when I take 0 0.129 and I subtract 0 0.000587, do that in your calculator, and then round to three sig figs. You know what you'll get? 0 0.129. Why did you get the same thing? Because you're subtracting such a small number, it doesn't even matter. So we get 0 0.129 as our final answer there, and 0 0.00117 as our final answer there. So here's the trick, right? Because the x was so small, it wasn't going to matter when we subtracted it from 0 0.129 there. And that's why we could drop it. So whenever you see a small k, a k less than 10 to the minus 4, take advantage of this trick. Drop the added or subtracted x and save yourself some time. This turns out to be really important with weak acids and bases where you'll use ice tables. You can always drop the added or subtracted x there and it saves you a lot of time. All right, thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Subscribe or like or do anything you want with the video or just turn off your TV screen and go outside and do something fun. Okay, bye.